What's up, guys? Welcome back. My name is Jeff, and I'm the owner of RDR Gear here in Salt Lake City, Utah. If you don't know what we do at RDR, let me tell you. I know you want to talk about this, but let's talk about this first. We are a soft goods manufacturer. We specialize in plate carriers, chest rigs, all styles of belts, two-piece battle belts, overt belts, etc. We also have a full line of professional canine gear, plate carriers, chest rigs, all types of other miscellaneous soft goods. We also are known for our safari line modifications and wraps. That's something that we do quite a bit of. You can find all of that on our website at rdrgear.com. If you have questions about your order or a question on the product line, info at rdrholsters.com is the email. You can always DM me on Instagram or Facebook, mostly Instagram. We don't really use Facebook anymore, but I'll get you squared away with whatever your needs may be. With all that out of the way, let's talk about, you know who else's initials are JW? Jack Wilbur? Yes, sir. So who's the real John Wick, right? Y you? Yeah. Will, yeah. will you please stand up? With a, real John, with a real John Wick, please stand up? No. But I got John Wick's gun. This is the Terran Tactical Sand Viper. So this is a unique pistol. A uh, little backstory on this pistol. It came to us from the people over at Terran Tactical to get some Farland holsters made for it. And let's just start with that conversation there. Uh, when this came to us, I wasn't too familiar with the pistol. You guys saw it on Instagram when I posted it. Uh, I accidentally posted like a day prior to the release, um, but we're pretty small to those guys, so not many people saw it. But those of you who did knew what it was right away. I did not. And of course, as fast forward time went on, we learned that this was possibly the gun or a version of the new pistol for the new John Wick 4. This pistol here is a new iteration to the Combat Master series or the John Wick series, etc. But this is a very unique pistol in a lot of ways. Uh, it is a 2011 platform pistol. It, it has a built-in compensator. Uh, it is a Coyote bronze finish. It is a tri-cut slide. This is where it kind of, we'll come back to this in a minute, but that's kind of what kills it for so far products. This is probably one of the deepest red dot cuts of any 2011 pistol. It gives you a very, very true point of aim, point of impact from five to 50, no matter where you put that dot, rounds are going. The gun shoots you very well. It has front cock inspirations all the way to the top of the slide, integrated. This port right here is super big, eats a lot of the recoil. It's very pleasant to shoot. Uh, it was very fun and very flat shooting today. Uh, one of the cool things, and it's a feature of the pistol called the fangs for the Sand Viper. If you put your fingers up top here, this is a very, very sharp feature of the pistol. You can kind of see these two little fangs right here. Those things would leave a mark if you were chest punched or muzzle punched with those on there. So that's one of the cool features about the pistol. Unlike other 2011s that are squared off to the front of the barrel with a full dust cover. This one's kind of a sloped cut right here, which I like the aesthetics of that. The cock inspirations are super easy and very tactile to get to. Uh, black nitride finished barrel, uh, stippled polymer frame, magwell. This gun here, the trigger, is phenomenal. Uh, trigger is very clean. You guys can, that's a very clean, very low recoil. That's the wall right there. So any pressure now, we're good to go. This gun recently won two gun nationals. Uh, one of the shooters for the Terran Tactical team, the, a lot of those had run this gun. That's where I got it. JR sent this pistol over to us uh, for a holster fitment. And let's talk about holsters. So the reason that this holster does not fit into a Safari Land RDS holster is due to the tri-cut slide right here. So normally what happens when you look at a 2011, there's more of a horseshoe shape with a lot of meat from the ejection port point right here all the way to the other side. So we have more of a horseshoe shape. Well, this one here is kind of a roof of a house. We have this shape, right? So what happens when you look at this corner right here, the amount of material that's from the slide to the barrel right here, it's so minimal that the ALS module can't lock into that ejection port and stay locked in. It 
you can wiggle the gun and it will break free. If this slide was more rounded, there would be a bigger ledge or wall right there. Therefore, the ALS module would lock in and have a much better retention on the pistol. Unfortunately, with the way this portion is right here and with these cock concentrations going all the way to the front of the slide right here, it works kind of like a saw. So what little plastic there is locking onto this point here, as the gun passes through, reholsters, this serrated, serrated edge right here just continues to eat to the plastic. This could be fixed by using a level three holster, but that's a little slow for competition guys. So they wanted a ALS holster only, but unfortunately over time that's just gonna fail. So therefore that's not something we've done. We're working on a solution with a level three right now that might work. So we'll see how that pans out going forward. Red dot cut is RMR, SRO, or hollow sun, your choice. The gun does not have any iron sights on it. It is a competition driven pistol, uh, not maybe so much for duty. And with this trigger, I definitely don't think it will be a duty rated pistol. Another cool feature that the TT team is very proud of is the re removal of the memory groove. This is very reminiscent of having a pin safety. Or so if you did pin this in the future, you have a very clean finish right here. It's very smooth, but the memory groove that's in most 2011s has a little hump down here, that is gone. So when you grip the pistol, you have a sh true engagement. You're not worried about uh, disengaging the, not getting the safety to disengage. That topic right there, to me, uh, that's going to be something more of a personal preference thing. I don't think the memory groove in, is an issue, personally. Um, I think, depending on hand size, when you hit that safety, you're, you know you've gripped the pistol. Um, I think the memory groove thing or rubber banding the grip safety, uh, I personally never had an issue gripping the pistol and getting the gun, but I shoot the 20 of them platform quite a bit, so maybe that's just over time repetition that I haven't had an issue gripping this. There are maybe a time where I've, well, actually I can't remember a time where I didn't get the safety either, so I just done it so many times that I don't know if there's ever a time where I've missed it. But for some people who are new to a single action pistol, getting the gun and forgetting, oh shoot, safety, you know, that's common. That's just reps on the range. But this portion here, I don't know if that's a huge thing, but it is something that Terran team um, has done and it's not something you see on other pistols. Either you see it pinned or you see the memory groove in there. So that's something that Terran Tactical did uh, innovate in regards to this. The texture on this back strap, phenomenal. Super, just very well done. Magwell is great. Uh, very big, very large, very easy. Um, the blending I feel in here between the Magwell and the grip probably could have had a little bit more tuning to it. Uh, that's just maybe a small gripe, but over time that's probably going to wear in anyway if you do enough mag changes. Uh, they make two frame styles, I believe. They have a silicone carbide and then the textured stipple. Um, that's an option. You can, I think you can get that as an option between the two frames. It does have a very nice oversized tactile safety right here. So mag goes in. Um, it's very easy to mag in and get that barely. It's, it's good to go. It's got a, quite a bit of a lip right there. So that's a, a nice feature I like as well. Uh, the pistol is very well designed. Um, magazine release, super large mag release. You don't have to do anything, no changing the grip or anything to get to the mag release. Very well done, very good. The gun shoots phenomenal. Uh, very impressed. The gun is extremely fast. <coughs> the one thing that I think uh, for the limited reviews that are out there, there are some folks who have uh, posted these up and have them already in their possession. Um, this pistol with a red dot, three Atlas magazines, the Magwell, et cetera, breaks an $8,000 price tag, 8,500 to be exact. That's a lot of money for this level of pistol. I think for those who are true dedicated USPSA two gun, three gun shooters, and they're not going to that Atlas or maybe an infinity price point due to an all metal module frame, this is probably a gun that an experienced shooter would recognize due to the weight, the speed, the maneuverability, and the pistol handling compared to say maybe a metal module uh, pistol like uh, I mentioned Atlas or an Infinity and Nighthawk, etc. But it's going to be something that each individual purchaser has to weigh that consideration because that is getting into the higher end of custom pistols. Uh, Atlas Erebus and Athena, 
shooting Athena with all kinds of goodies, uh, the Erebus, um, or even into the lower end of the Affinity models where you're gonna have a gun made for you. So again, that's something to consider. There is some collectible value to this as well, considering the John Wick series um, and the Terran Tactical reputation. It's a phenomenal pistol, very well made. Uh, I think you're gonna have no issues there. And again, it's just simply whether or not you're going to want to invest that level of price point in this pistol. So guys, at the end of the day, this is a phenomenal gun. Thanks for Terran Tactical for letting us borrow this pistol. Um, and, and this has been a phenomenal pistol to shoot. We have a comparison video coming out soon as well between Sand Viper, Nighthawk TRS Comp, the Staccato XC. We're gonna have a little battle comp series between all three pistols. That'll be something you guys will be able to see. We've done some B8 shooting with those, some speed shooting, some movement stuff. I think it'll be a fun little comparison between three of the probably coolest comp 2011s on the market right now. As always, guys, thanks for watching. We post Tuesday videos every week on Gear the Review, Gear the Manufacturer, Gear that We Sell. Until next time, be well. Take care. She's a seven, but she's dissatisfied if she doesn't get a gift at least once every two weeks. I am not going to start dating my ex again. I'm sorry. Two. She's a two. I think Kanye West said she's a gold digger. Hey, if your love language is gifts, I'm not your guy. But if your love language is hand jobs.